Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video review by Mirror Lesson. This time I'm here with something a bit different. It's not a camera, it's not a lens, but it is an adapter and I believe quite a unique adapter. The TechArt Pro LM-EA7 that enables autofocus on your Sony mirrorless camera. Up until recently the use of Leica, Zeiss or Voigtlander M lenses was strictly a manual operation and to be honest this was part of what made the user experience so enjoyable since all these lenses have precise mechanical rings. This adapter includes an autofocus motor that works in conjunction with the phase detection points on the sensor to move the lens back and forth. So let's have a closer look at how it works, how the autofocus performance is and most importantly if it makes sense to buy it. The Tecar Pro autofocus adapter comes in a nice package. It is made of metal and feels quite solid, but it isn't weather sealed. As you can see, the bottom part extends quite a bit to house the motor and it also contains a Bluetooth module. After mounting the adapter and the lens, you will notice that the protuberance extends below the base of the camera. So when you lie the camera on a flat surface, it actually rests on the adapter. That said, I found it strong enough to support the weight without any issue. The adapter is compatible with all M-mount lenses, but there is a weight limit of 700 gram. Actually, TechArt suggests that you support the weight with your hand for lenses heavier than 300 gram for the best focusing performance. I personally didn't find a substantial difference between the lightest and heaviest lenses I used, but it is a good tip to keep in mind. The maximum shift on the Z axis is 4.5 mm and according to TechArt that is enough to cover the focus distance range of most lenses. With lenses up to 50 mm you simply rotate the focus ring to infinity. The company also provides a focusing range table according to the lens you mount. One of the first interesting things about this adapter is that it can shorten the minimum focus distance of your lens. For example, one of the two lenses I used for my test was the Ultron 35mm f1.7 and its minimum focus distance is 50cm. If I rotate the focus ring to the minimum focus distance and then use the adapter to autofocus, I can get as close as approximately 31 cm. This is possible simply because the adapter moves the entire lens further away from the sensor. With telephoto lenses, the infinity solution might not always work. For example, here I have another Voigtlander lens, the Helia 75 1.8. If I set the focus ring to infinity and try to autofocus at short focus distances, I can end up with soft results. In this example, I am approximately 1.5 meters away from my subject, which is still within the range capabilities of the lens, whose minimum focus distance is 90 cm. So the solution is to pre-focus manually by setting the focus ring to around 5 meters, for example. Doing so will give you a perfectly sharp shot. The same trick to decrease the minimum focus distance is still valid, however. If I set the after ring to the minimum, I can actually focus at around 60 cm. Concerning the focus distance in general, it is important to understand that there can be variations from lens to lens. One example is the type of focus mechanism. Unit focusing lenses move the entire set of optical elements when you turn the focus ring. These Voigtlander lenses I just mentioned are two of them. This type of mechanism is perfectly compatible with the Tecar Pro adapter. However, other lenses can move one group of elements only. 
those have a floating element design. In that case, you may need to pre-focus by adjusting the focus ring first and then fine-tune with autofocus. This can be especially valid if you are focusing close to an object and will allow you to preserve better optical quality. The last note applies especially if you want to use other lenses than M-mount lenses. You can use a second adapter on the LN EA7 and use lenses such as the Canon FD, Contax CY, Leica Air and other type of lenses. Basically, you will have a lens and two adapters including the Tecar Pro LN EA7 attached to your camera. However, remember that the maximum weight of the second adapter and the lens still has to be below 700 grams. Some customers reported that you can use a heavier lens and just hold it with your second hand while you're shooting, but then it becomes a two-handed operation at all time, and one moment of carelessness could result in damaging the adapter, so I personally don't recommend it. So we've seen the limits of the various focus distances and certain lenses, but how the autofocus perform? Is it reliable? Well, I have to say that the performance isn't bad, it is reasonably fast, in good light or when focusing close. However, the results are not always precise. In situations with low contrast such as landscape shots on a cloudy day, the adapter can have trouble focusing or can focus but give you an inaccurate result. It is slower in low light too. Another thing I noticed is that it performs better when you use the center point or the flexible point within the center area of the frame. If you try to focus at the edges, it will keep hunting back and forth. In continuous autofocus, the performance gives mixed results. Many times the adapter wasn't capable of keeping track of the subject even when it was moving slowly. For fast moving subjects like a person running towards you, it simply won't keep up. Concerning the AF options, basically the adapter behaves like the Sony LA EF3. You don't have Zone AF and you can't use IAF, the AFA mode or the Locon AF mode. Another thing to understand is that the adapter works with Sony cams that have phase detection points and that allow phase detection compatibility with third-party adapters and lenses. These lists include the A7R Mark II, the A7 Mark II, the A6300 and the A6500. I tried it on the A6300 as well and it performs in the same way as with the A7R Mark II. With cameras that have contrast detection only such as the A7S, the performance will be much slower or it might not work at all. One last thing to highlight is that continuous AF doesn't work in movie mode. In general, if you want to switch to manual focus, you need to assign the AF-MF control toggle option to one of the custom buttons. The focus mode function won't let you switch to manual focus for some reason. The Tecar Pro is compatible with sensor stabilization. However, because the focus distance is not transmitted to the camera, you can only use free access. The best solution is to set the steady shot to manual and input the correct focal length as you would normally do with adapter lenses that lack electronic contacts. That way you are sure to get accurate results. With both the 35mm and 75mm, I managed to get sharp shot at around 1 5th of a second. One last thing left to cover is EXIF data and metering. You basically have two choices, having correct EXIF data but wrong metering or correct metering and wrong EXIF data. Bear with me because here things get a bit more tricky. You normally control the aperture on the lens itself with this kind of manual focus products and here the concept is the same. You set your exposure and your depth of field with the aperture ring on the lens. You don't have any other choice because the lens doesn't have electronic contacts. However, the adapter does have electronic contacts, so the camera is actually recording an F number. However, the two are not directly connected. If I set my aperture ring to 5.6, the camera is still showing F2 unless I manually turn the dial on the camera to match the same number. So what does this F number on the camera really do? Well, it can be used for different things. 
you can record the correct aperture in the EXIF data by matching the same values set on the lens. Certain aperture values can be used to change the focal length in the EXIF data. Other aperture values can trigger certain settings on the adapter itself. Let's have a look at how aperture and metering work. The first important thing to understand is that the Tecar Pro has been designed to behave like the LA EF3, which is the Sony adapter that allows you to use Sony A-mount lenses on E-mount cameras. More precisely, this adapter pretends to have a DT 14mm f2.8 SAM lens on it, which of course doesn't exist, but that's the lens name that will appear in your metadata. The second important thing to understand is that the adapter uses f2 as a reference for the correct exposure. It contradicts the fictional lens name that indicates f2.8, but that's just a name that TechArt engineers chose for some unknown reason. What matters is f2 because, again, it is the reference for a correct exposure. That's how the adapter works. Let me show some examples. Here I have my scene with f2 set on the lens and the camera. I adjusted my shadow speed and ISO accordingly to have an optimal exposure, and the metering on the camera is showing a perfect balance. If I take a shot, you can see the exposure is correct. Now let's say I want to stop down to f4. I set my aperture on the lens, then adjust my shadow speed or ISO to compensate, and here again my metering is showing zero. Then I change the F number on the camera to record the correct EXIF data, and suddenly the metering indicates that I've underexposed by two stops. However, if I take my shot, the exposure remains correct. If I had trusted the metering in this case and changed my shadow speed again to bring the metering back to zero, my shot would have been overexposed. So long story short, if you want to record the correct aperture for the EXIF data for any value smaller than f2, the metering of your camera will show an incorrect measurement. Basically, the camera will think you are underexposing by 1, 2, 3 or 4 stops depending on how small your aperture is. This becomes more tricky if you want to work in aperture priority mode because the camera will tend to use a slower shutter speed than necessary and you will end up with overexposed images. One trick is to use the exposure compensation dial but it only works up to plus or minus 3 stops. If you are shooting at f8, there is a 4 stop difference in comparison to f2 which, I repeat, is the reference for this adapter. This means you need to go into the menu or assign exposure compensation to a function button because from there you can go down to minus 5. Earlier I talked about changing the focal length in the EXIF data. Note that it won't change the lens name, that will always remain DT 14mm f2.8, which is again a fictional lens name. The way to change the focal length data is to select certain F numbers and take a shot to activate the change. Let's say I want to change the focal length to 45mm since this is the focal length I am using. By setting the F number on the camera to F22 and taking a single shot, the focal length value changes. From now on, if I take any additional shots, the EXIF data will indicate 45mm. This may sound like an easy way of making sure you're always recording the correct lens information. However, the problem is that the set of F numbers you can use to change the data starts from F11. This means that if I take a shot with my 45mm lens at F11, which is an aperture you may use often for landscapes or street photography, I am also changing my focal length data in the process. So if you want to avoid messing with the EXIF data, you can't use a smaller aperture than F8. Another small problem is that the list of focal length data you can change is not complete. For example, it lacks 75mm which is one of the two lenses I used. There is the possibility of changing the factory settings with a mobile app on your smartphone but the application is only for Android device, as of now. Unfortunately, I have an Apple device so it isn't something I was able to try. As such, I set the data to 90mm instead. Finally, some other F values like F46 will make the adapter move towards the infinity focus. If I set it to F40 and take another picture, then the adapter moves to the shortest focus distance. 
F90 is useful for triggering Bluetooth connectivity to receive firmware updates. At the time of writing this review, the adapter is at firmware 4.0, it may receive future updates to fix or improve different things. So that's it for this in-depth look at the Tekka Pro Autofocus Adapter for M lenses. I know I spent a lot of time talking about EXIF data, but it was important to show you how the adapter works and where all the tricky errors lie. Personally, I found the adapter more interesting to use with longer focal lengths like the 75mm than shorter focal lengths. Manual focus is generally more difficult with telephoto lenses, especially those with fast apertures, and that's where this adapter can help you fine-tune your focus point more quickly and easily. The AF performance is fast and surprised me on more than one occasion, but can also be imprecise, slow in moving subject, in low light and doesn't work for video. Finally, I admit that all the settings related to EXIF data, aperture values and metering are somewhat complicated. I wish Tecart could design a better app and allow you to change some of these settings without compromising metering or the smaller aperture. For now, perhaps the best way to enjoy this adapter is to simply not care about recalling the correct aperture and focal length data. As usual, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Please like and subscribe and see you soon. Bye bye.